Nebraska Preps post game with Damon Benning and Jacob Padilla. Second favorite time of the week when I'm not out coaching is with Jacob Padilla. No offense to the fam. Uh, it is another week of Nebraska. I'm crazy. <laughs> Nebraska Preps post game with my man JP as we transition uh, out with uh, hoops and with football. I I felt for you, though, because, you know, we do the social media thing together, and I pay attention to what you say. Bittersweet to close out this year as you said goodbye to a, a team that you were pretty close to. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's all, this is my second time, like, full cycle through with a group. Um, and this group was really special all three years. The success we had, just um, the way those guys fit my style. They were so much fun to be around. I had two guys that I coached all three years and we had five back from last year. So, and then a number of guys that had the first two years. So it, it was a really special group. It's always tough when you get to the, it's tough when you get to the end of an AAU season, it's even more difficult when it's that 17 U season and you know, this is it. Um, but a lot of good kids and I'm going to look forward to seeing all those guys during their senior year for sure. Uh, as we put a bow on that one, we open up the other, another gift called the fall football season. Uh, should be highly competitive. This is the first time I felt like on a little bit of time, there isn't really a clear cut favorite. Um, I, I, I would start with Gretna number one for sure, but in terms of clear cut, you know, I don't know. I mean, it, it, there's a good, I could get to seven teams. I think could legitimately make a run at a state championship. I don't know where you're at with that. That that sounds about right. Again, you, you start with reigning champs. Gretna got the quarterback back. West side, obviously the runner up. Um, you guys are going to be right there in the mix yeah. um, with some of the additions you made, the returners um, coming back for another year. WS is always going to be good. They're always going to have weapons. Um, that offense is always going to be high powered. Then you start getting into some of the others. Obviously, there, there's some changes there with some of those other programs, but they still got a lot of talent like Millard South, obviously a new coach there. You, you lose Gage Stanger, but you got a lot of good athletes back. Um, Elkhorn South is always going to be yeah. in the mix. Um, and you, you can kind of keep running down there. I think Omaha North might be ready for uh, another step forward this year. So it should be a fun year. I think that, like you said, it's kind of pretty deep with uh, teams that have a chance to be pretty darn good. Yeah, I think in some order, everybody's top six or seven will be Gretna, Westside, Bellevue West, Elkhorn South, Prep, and Omaha North, right? I think that that seven right there in, in, in whatever order. Uh, and, you know, somebody's going to probably emerge uh, from Lincoln, I think Lincoln Southwest and Lincoln Southeast will be able to make their case. I know Lincoln East is raising their hand saying, hey, we got a chance, you know, especially if we get some good quarterback play. But this year, perhaps more than than any. This one's predicated on quarterback play. I think you make Gretna one primarily because they have arguably the best player in the yeah. 2023 class. And that's Zane Flores. Yeah. And um Again, we, we've talked about him plenty, but just 222 yards per game, 70% completion, 26 touchdowns, seven interceptions last year. Um, most productive returning quarterback. And obviously we know how talented he is on, on top of just the raw numbers. Um, and great. Now they, they lost a few pieces, but they still got uh, s some talented uh, skill position guys for him to, to, to throw to as well. Yeah, you've got. You got Roll who will return, yeah. who's fantastic, arguably the best route yeah. runner, one of the best route runners in the state. You like Boganowski. They'll probably use Snell in some sure. sort of hybrid flex spot. You like Joey Beef. I mean, you've got Mason Goldman up front. You got Corver Dema, who now there'll be a few of these guys. There's probably nine or ten guys that I would put in this discussion, but Dema may be one of the better kept secrets. I think in the Metro, he's a classic runner hitter. He's a high motor guy. Uh, he puts in the time during the off season. And I said this about halfway through last season, when I started to kind of take a look at matchups and I'm watching Gretna and kind of what makes him tick. Then we saw it firsthand when we played them. When Corver hits you, it just sounds and feels a little bit different, right? It just, he's a big, strong kid. I don't have any problems putting Gretna number one, especially as the defending state champs. Yeah. And um, you mentioned, obviously, you're going to have to replace a huge piece of what they did on both sides of the ball with Mick Huber. Yeah. But he was again, fantastic. Yeah. He, that was, he was a 
great player. And he was the perfect complement for that, that passing attack where great in the screen game. He can go, go get those tough yards to open up the, the downfield passing game, the quick game. Um, that was such a good kind of compliment between the, the Flores passing attack with Hubert grinding out the yards underneath. So you have to find somebody to step up into that role, but uh, I'm sure they've got some options there that they're working through uh, right now during camp. Yeah. And then I think as you kind of sort through the next crop, it, it's all about quarterback play, right? We'll start with who I think will be most people's number two. That's Omaha West side led by, you can talk about all the skill you want to and, and who has offers, and if Anthony oh, yeah. Rizak is good, Westside has a chance to be incredible. 100%, and that that was the key to that championship game win. He just had no time to make any plays. There's somebody in his face on every single down. He didn't get a chance to, to show what he's capable of, but previously throughout the season, like taking over midseason as a yeah. sophomore, he put up um, he put up ridiculous it, numbers immediate and you kind of talked to me like lean up to like oh this i think this is going to happen i'm yeah. like wow and <laughs> sure, i was like okay first time i went and saw him play when he kind of mid yeah. mid game is when he he stepped in there and, and took over and just took that job and ran with it and he is the he's the real deal he is a big strong fast guy and he put he's tr he truly puts the duel in dual threat yeah. oh yeah and uh you know he's He's fast. Uh, he's got good command of this offense, and he's got toys. Now he's he's, he's got a, he's got a lot of weapons. Yeah, I would say Caleb Benning. Uh, you're saying going to be playing more playing more on offense now. Yeah, um, holy, holy he, he's healthy. he's their he's their number one receiver right now, and he's coming off a really good spring kind of summer where people figured out he could actually play offense too. I think all the love has come defensively, but um, he you, you grab the make like 20 tackles and you're like your second game. Like it's <laughs> yeah. probably going to attract some attention on that side of the ball, but. And, and, and he'll play opposite Jalen Lloyd, who. Transfer from Omaha Central, obviously we know a great athlete, add that deep threat um, option there to open up more, maybe yeah. Caleb more underneath in the slot type stuff. And, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about Lloyd and, he, and he's, he's fantastic, right? He's, he's one of the best in the nation and not very many people can say that in his craft and track and field, but two guys that I think will are kind of flying under the radar. Caleb Bennett gets love, right? The Rezacs. Anthony probably more than Teddy, even though I think Teddy's going to be amazing. Ted, Teddy is, I mean, he, you put him in that wide receiver group. It's, you know, if we go three wide, it's 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 Teddy, Lloyd, Caleb. The fourth receiver is, is going to be one of the guys that I really like, and, and Mr. Cotton coming over from Papio, which was very tough, I think, for that family to do. Yeah, they, they have been they have been, family. They have yeah, been a lot huge. come through there. Yeah, you know, his his dad works for that police department, and I think this one was about opportunity. Um, just wanting him to kind of flourish and do something different, get out of the shadow of kind of those in front of him. Uh, and he's going to be a headliner. It's Cotton and McDonald, Peyton McDonald, in my opinion, up front that have been quietly really good additions i mean lloyd is an easy one Truett is an easy one coming over from central christian jones is really easy for co coming over with coach lamangi from burke they get the Long headlines Campbell. they get they get the headlines right campbell's fantastic very good two-way player but mcdonald and i think cotton who cotton's tool bag is full he can play corner he can play safety we can put him in a slot we can put him at running back and we, and we finally have enough depth up front on that offensive line where I, I mean, Rezac's definitely going to be the straw that stirs the drink because he's such a tough matchup. He makes you play pretty even handed. Yeah. Oh, and then you add Jamin's Ross uh, into the mix. Isn't it crazy? How he's, out the, of the, yeah, he's the forgotten stepping guy. Stepping out of the shadow of Dominic Rezac last year. And oh. now it's his chance to kind of take that job and run with it and be the, the workhorse back as opposed to the change of pace where he show, showed what he is capable of. Yeah. Um, the now, scary things there aren't a lot of seniors that were mentioned in that group. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a younger group, but uh, and a and a reoccurring theme. It will be how good are the quarterbacks? The next team in that discussion, Bellevue West, ton of weapons offensively. They can throw it around the yard, led by Davon Hall, uh, Mister Everything. Um, ton of offers out there, but man, does he have some friends? <laughs> With with Edernacht and yeah, coming over from Burke, yeah. and, um, good looking prospect, really good physical pros uh, prospect. You got Isaiah McMorris coming over from Millard North. 
He gets old, reliable number four back, who I think belongs in. He, this young man belongs in the 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 better kept secrets, right? He he got hurt against us in the semifinals. I think it changed the way that Bellevue West wanted to play offense. Uh, but number four for the T Birds is a handful, and I know you kind of like him, don't you? Yeah, um, talented player. Um, we'll see kind of second year here stepping into um, the mix to uh, kind of establish himself. And then we'll see what um, Daniel Kane when it's finally his turn. Um, That's they, he's, he's the key, right? Kind of had that back and forth. Obviously had a lot of success um, on the seven on seven circuit. Now 11 on 11, there's no senior uh, quarterback there kind of to, to split time with. It's it's his job to go out there and uh, show what he can do with. And, and here's the thing, right? These Coach Huffman teams in the past – have been able to run the ball. The the list is long of guys that could that could run the ball with Jalen Bradley and Ducker and 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 Richardson. I think their ability to to churn out yards on the ground will be key. Jaden Bouillon has been a nice addition. I don't know how much offense he's going to play for them, but they've usually had the guy that they can hand the ball off to when it gets kind of hectic. That's going to give them a chance to. To, to kind of have some success that that that's the guy that I want to see if it, they can go wrong. And I said, number four, Kyrell is wearing number 11, but, but uh, I probably threw you for a loop there. <laughs> yeah. That's I almost, I, was, I almost never, I don't really, I almost never use his name. Sometimes I just yeah. say KJ. I saw him at, at, at media days and I give him a hard time just because, you know, he doesn't say really mu- a, a ton. He killed us in yeah. seven on seven uh, high school versus high school yeah. uh, at Lewis central. Jordan belongs, and I don't want to do him a disservice. I, I, I want to say his name. He belongs in the discussion of the better kept secrets in the Metro. I, I, I think KJ is the real deal. Yeah, and can make an impact on either side of the ball. And yeah, he, he really, he really um, changed the way that they played last year when he came out of the game. Yeah, and that's like last year they had so many big names last year that he. I mean, you look at the box score week to week. He was in the mix as much as any of those guys. Like they traded off. Obviously, you got you go five deep and guys that are capable of leading you in any given game. Um, it's nice to have. And he was certainly one of those guys. And now, obviously, but the tight ends are gone. Um, it's yeah, edernock has got some yeah. big shoes to fill. Oh, yeah. Replacing, you know, uh, Michael Riley Ducker. It's like the, he – he was their best offensive player against us in the semifinals. And he kind of, I felt, for an Auburn guy, flew under the radar for them because, you know, the consistency wasn't there. But I felt like for them offensively, he was clearly the best player against us. That's going to be interesting to see how they replace him. Yeah, for sure. And, again, just the versatility of those two guys, what they they provided there to, to kind of complement those quicker outside receivers yeah. and slot guys. Um, they gave him a lot of versatility. And again, uh, LJ, LJ Richardson, one of the best in the state like that. That's a huge loss. You mentioned, um, they've got to figure out kind of, um, how, how they're going to replace that, but just the, the overall combination of all those different pieces, they still got athletes all over the place. Yeah. It's just going to be guys aren't as proven as they were last year where it, cause LJ and the, the tight ends, all those guys played as sophomores or starters as juniors and then, um, came back as seniors. So now these uh, you got some guys that are stepping that maybe haven't proven themselves to the same degree that those guys have, but they're, they're certainly talented. How about Caprice Keith, who is the son of Kenton Keith, uh, former Benson star, who just a freshman, but I think it is is definitely a guy that you got to keep an eye on. But if that offensive line comes together, they got to replace some studs. They That's, they were yeah. they they were so good up front uh, on both sides of the ball a year ago. I. But if if it, if not DK and Daniel Kalen, it, that offensive line has got to really gel. And I mean that's that's going to be the key for a lot of teams. Uh, well, well, let's go to the next team yeah. where the, our opening opponent at Creighton Prep. Yep. If if, if that's if, the one that's not a question. <laughs> if Donaldson is good yeah. and can give them some versatility, how good is that football yeah. team? Dean Donaldson, obviously they've got Sam Sledge coming back, uh, Rocco Marcelino. You got guys kind of leading that that line. Um, Mar- Marcelino could maybe make that list of 10 of the most underappreciated yeah. in the Metro, although he blew up after the Lindenwood camp yeah. with the offers. Uh, and um, congrats to him. Uh, 
Ivy League. That's not not bad. Yeah, uh, Dartmouth. That, yeah. Oh. Um, so uh, that's pretty. Uh, I mean, that, that's good. You kind of got the the cornerstones there, and um, Princeton. Um, was it, yeah, oh, did yeah, I say Dartmouth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Princeton. Following hey, up. No disrespect. I was thinking Dartmouth, Millard West, yeah. wideouts, long yeah. bodies. My mistake. Following a, um, uh, Mason Armstead out there, yeah. kind of that prep pipeline. One and, of my one of my favorites. Yeah. So, um, Gosh, yeah. boy, was he good. It, they got some good linemen there. Obviously, both those guys can play both ways. Um, you mentioned Donaldson kind of stepping in the quarterback. And then the kind of the headliner there, we know Sharma Brown. Uh, Marty Brown coming back there. So, and so good. They... Obviously, they had the kind of three-headed monster last year with um, senior with, with Brown and then with Egan, big tight end. Um, now, uh, it's I think they're going to ride uh, Brown a little bit more this year, give him a chance to to really kind of rack up the yards because he is he is just a monster. Um, yeah. Just the, the growth that he's made physically throughout his career, um, and now he's just he's a big complete back. Yeah, John, John Pargo's got to help them out. I think they're going to see eight in the box a ton, right? Yeah. Um, we know we're going to line up and stop the run. Uh, no, no secret. We're going to say, "Hey, Donaldson, you got to beat us outside the numbers, right?" We're going to play in the alleys. Let's we're, see what you got. We're going to yeah. play in the alleys. We're going to fit in the run game and and see if we can hang in there against that big, strong offensive line. But he gives him a dynamic. He's a long guy. He's tall, super angular. Uh, he looked good this summer in seven on seven. Now that's different with live ammo, yeah. but he's got some weapons. I like the younger Matthews, who's Grant's younger brother, Max. Max yeah. Um, good player. They, they, they got some guys. I mentioned Pargo. If they can find some development outside the numbers, it can really open up things for a devastating back. Yeah. Like you mentioned in Sharmar Brown. Yeah. Cause that is the question there. Cause most of their kind of the out wide guys, tight end receivers were seniors last year. Yeah. So, um, I mean, perhaps you're going to have some good athletes and see if those guys can step in, in into those roles. And, Again, Donaldson is one of those guys. There's a number of guys. I mean, Sebastian Serco is kind of the same thing at North, who yeah, we'll we've get heard to about, yeah. ha- have had some success, but now they got to go show it in 11 on 11 when the bullets are flying live that these guys could end up swinging the seasons for their teams, depending on how good they are. Oh, well, let's go to North, right? They're, they're in that discussion. Uh, I, you listen, you, you got a Ty Stewart, uh, a state championship wrestler. You have a Ryan Terry, a state championship wrestler. Tyson. Uh, did I say Ryan? <laughs> yep. Sorry. Hey, that'll be the last time I say his dad's name. He's, he's such a good friend. I can't yeah. help it, right? He coached, he coached Caleb for three years. So it's like I knew what you meant. It's like, oh, hey, Ryan. And Tyson's like, hey, what about me? Uh, Tyson Terry, a, a state championship wrestler. You you got to think with what they're doing in the backfield. Um, Porter can really tote the rock. You got to think guard, center, guard, north, very strong up the middle. Will they be the north of old with power and blast and weak side ISO? Or do you like a guy like Circo who has been very good in the offseason, in the seven on seven world, with being able to get the ball outside the numbers? And who's. Who will, he, who will he get it to? Yeah, obviously, Keyshawn Williams is going to be one of the tougher players in the Metro to replace. Um, I'm going to say this. His war, his wins yeah. above replacement. Now, I'm dead serious. Would be in the double digits. Oh, yeah. He's, his he Keyshawn very, very Williams good. wins above replacement will be very, very hard to replicate. Yeah. He was so good and so underappreciated a year ago. He won almost every 50-50 bowl. He was unbelievable. Yeah, and and you mentioned Porter there, and that's a big one. Last year, it takes we, he's the it, real deal. The the tep, the or the depth of talent at the running back position was just ridiculous last year with those seniors. Obviously, got um, a lot of the burn, but then you had a guy like Porter who was right there in the mix, just as good as any of those guys. 134 yards a game, six a pop, 18 touchdowns last year playing f- for that North team. Um, he they're obviously going to build everything around him, and then I like said the question is who. Uh, is Circo going to be solid back there, and who is he going to be throwing to, um, replacing a uh, superstar uh, like Williams? But they're going to uh, need some help from some of the young guys. Yeah. Titus Glassman, who played as a freshman at Omaha Burke last year, Circo obviously was at Burke last mm-hmm. year. Uh, a lot of defections from Omaha Burke once Coach Lamangi, uh decided yeah. to leave. But you know, you got Samarius Henderson, who is a good young, strong offensive lineman from them, a good baseball player to boot. If they don't have a ton of depth, but it highly skilled. Trey Brown, very good player. 
uh, who's going to have to really control the outside for them. And, and we talked about last year, just kind of for OPS coming off of um, that, that lost year for COVID, how tough that is to turn around and be able to play a full, uh, full season, having missed an entire year and, and everything that entails. So now they're another a year removed from that. Um, they were able to kind of build up some more depth last year, heading into this year, uh, kind of make up for some lost time. So hopefully that'll allow them to kind of maintain um, their, their effort and uh, intensity throughout the season. And yeah, Kayvon Shannon is another guy that they've got to find. If they can get some success outside the numbers, I think North's got a chance, but this next team scares me. Um, they're not on our schedule, but I think they're a team that a lot of folks are overlooking. Elkhorn South should be extremely talented. And if Ronner is good, they have a chance to be great. Another one of those young quarterbacks with with promise that if he's good and you can accentuate guys like Cole Ballard and you know, you got Prohaskin, obviously Noonan, and that's a talented Elkhorn South bunch. If Ronner's good, Elkhorn South has a chance to be kind of scary. Yeah, and again, it, you start with you, you said uh, right up top, um, Zayden Flores might. If be it's the best. not Flores, yeah. it's this guy. <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly right, <laughs> and Maverick Noonan. Um, no disrespect to Malachi Coleman, but it, we'll get to him in a well, second. Yeah, statistically. <laughs> he doesn't measure up to the production that Noonan and Flores have. So here, what we're saying, yeah. we're talking statistically yeah. in terms of proven fo- production, football high talent. Yeah. We're, we're, again, we'll, we'll mention like what shows how talented he is, but just they had some seniors there and had some other guys that were kind of uh, earlier in the, the reads uh, for the quarterback there. And so, um, but yeah, Elkhorn South, I mean, man, Maverick Noonan, the way that he's capable of changing any given game at any moment, like that's just something that nobody else has. Yeah. There's some other good defensive players throughout the state. Nobody, I don't think, can change a game in one play quite like Maverick Noonan can. And that'll be a great place to start. Uh, and then you mentioned Cole Ballard, another one of those talented uh, running backs. Underappreciated. Yeah, he? it's kind of um, under the radar last year because of the seniors, but he's another one of those really talented junior backs um, that, that, um, when's help when he's healthy, he's, he's tough, um, can play both ways, can play a little bit of defense as well. Um, getting some good looks from the next level. He, he's just a tough kid that, um, isn't afraid to, to mix it up there and going to grind out some tough yards for them. You, you know, um, lost some talented players up front over the last few years, but, yeah. um, you mentioned Prohaska there defensively and, um, both like he'll, he'll help hey, them don't, out. Don't, 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 yeah. Henry's like, Hey, I'm over here. <laughs> yep. I think I'm pretty good, too, and a very popular household name for the folks over there at Elkhorn South. So, yeah, that's Elkhorn South, again, it's going to be, be in the mix as well. You, you know, coaching is going to be solid out there. They're, all, they're always in, in the mix. So that's what there's six teams right now that we, we feel like um, have a chance to be in the mix. And, and the last and, one that we'll mention before we get to who we think is like Super Six and maybe yeah. talk Coleman and some of these other individual talents, Millard South yeah. – really won me over now and and listen i'm i'm not anti seven on seven but i am a guy that takes seven on seven with a grain of salt because i've seen a lot of guys be very good without pads and not very good with i I, coach wisdom ty wisdom miller south's new head coach taking over for andy means has got some huge shoes huge shoes to fill but he has got a good young bunch he inherited a host of talent over there on 144th and Q. Yeah. Um, Lance Rucker is a guy that, um, that I'm really high on, uh, North Dakota. Committed, yeah. Committed to North Dakota and, uh, just athletic, talented plays hard. Uh, another guy that's going to really cause problems off the edge. Brock Murtaugh is a guy that's been, that's played a lot of football for them already and is now finally a senior. So, so I'm at the NAB preps media days and I see him quite a bit just in, uh, because our kids get uh, he gets along really well with Caleb and I, I like Ryan his dad a ton and so we, we kind of cross paths a ton. We talk about a a fantastic frame. Boy, Brock Murtaugh has grown quite a bit. He should be a force to reckon with for the Patriots and 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 his offer list isn't short. Let's have Camden Cozio who that's yeah and I know people want oh why is he why is he why is he playing football why is he wasting his time with football hey he can flat out spin it 
I mean, he's an SEC baseball recruit. He's Vandy, Vandy bound. Cozio's pretty good. But man, he likes to compete. I, I don't knock the hustle, man. Yeah. He is uh he's a it's a good player right there. Yeah, and gotta gotta see a little bit of him last year um in the mix, whether um they were in blowouts or um they wanted to stretch uh stagger out wide a little bit. Ed Cozio come in off the bench. So he he's got some snaps under his belt, so he's not coming in um totally inexperienced and um yeah it's just well that's to see you never know new new co- coach coming in how exactly it's going to mesh with the he, talent listen, but, he's not short on confidence yeah. he's going to get those guys to believe he's got a good freshman quarterback that can spin it you know jr it, it's is it lacuna i always feel like i'm saying it wrong but lucona um very good up front for them in the interior super high motor um, I like Feller uh, out of a, out of the backfield as a as a as a running mate. They had a really good freshman class. Their their twenty twenty four group is is pretty talented, and those those guys Tegan Urban and a uh, very popular last name. Um, yeah, th- th- those guys they showed me quite a bit in terms of their competitiveness. They have their coaches. They kind of have Coach Wisdom swag, right? He he does not lack confidence, and I think. The Patriots kind of exude that. Yeah. So, again, anytime you lose a player like Gage Stenger that meant uh-huh. so much to that and team, Mr. You, everything, and then a new coach on top of that, but they've got, he's got a lot to work with in this first year. So, that, that's going to be a team that's going to be really interesting to track throughout the season, kind of how they develop and kind of mesh and grow with all the changes that they've undergone. But again, with, with a good talent level to, to start from. Yeah. You know, and, and, it's just a school that's been able to quietly kind of just keep doing what they do. Now they lost a great offensive coordinator in Trevor Long, who is now over at Millard West with coach Peterson, which is a team that I'm thinking to myself, Oh my gosh, you get a defensive minded guy like Kirk Peterson who's really good at what he does and a really sound offensive mind like Trevor Long. Millard West interests me. <laughs> A little bit just to kind of kind of see where they're at. You, you know, we'll talk about, you know, Lincoln East with Malachi Coleman. Uh, replacing Walters that, yeah, that's... can't be easy. He was so good for what he did. Well, and Walter and then the other senior receivers, obviously you got Malachi coming back, but the, he was like the fourth option yeah. because they were that talented uh, in the receiver depth um, um, with those guys leading the way there. So. You lose all those guys. You've got Malachi coming back, who was one of the, the league leader or the state leaders in sacks last year defensively. And then just, I, I was just looking up the numbers before we started and just, he caught 17 passes last year for 561 yards and 10 touchdowns. Yeah. Is that <laughs> efficient? I'm not sure. Like, wait, it's, wait. it's 33 yards per carry if yeah. you don't want to do the math. That's pretty good. That's, <laughs> he has three catches in here in the end zone on every single drive. So. So, and it's funny too, because if you're not in like the high school recruit recruiting world or like all in, you're kind of wondering like, Hey, what's the big deal? Like productivity was just okay. I didn't hear a ton about him last year. Part of that is what you're describing, right? Where he was in the pecking order in terms of polished wide receivers. Oh, by the way, he's a great three, four outside linebacker. And he was extremely efficient as a pass catcher when he was targeted. He could potentially have a big year if he gets any sort of quality quarterback play at all. Yeah, Cooper Erickson led the state in receiving. Uh, he he was unbelievable. For ease. How about every time we did the show, we would say like, you know, six for 187. Yeah. It just seemed like we just pencil him in for <laughs> and, that, that would that would be his uh, that would be his total. Yeah, and Billy Stevenson as well. Um, like they they just they were so talented on, on the outside. So that big opportunity there. It just matters. That, is he going to have somebody that can get him the ball, and is he ready to kind of match up with the number one? Uh, have defenses kind of shifted his way? Um, it'll be interesting to see how they use him, what where they play him on the field to try to get the most out of him. Uh, again, especially without those other guys that you kind of already had entrenched in their roles. Who? So who else do you? Kind of, I like AJ Sizes too. Uh, yeah. yeah. Good player. Uh, comes from really good stock. Mom was a good athlete. David, uh, his dad played at at Nebraska. Uh, really, really good stock. Is it, it, right now, and I I kind of am leaning 
Lincoln Southwest. I like them. I was going to ask you who you thought out of Lincoln, Lincoln. Southeast yeah. is the popular choice. Yeah. Obviously, with, they got some names there with Gunnar Gatula uh, and Max Butenbach coming back, the running yeah. back spot. Well, they'll be Butenbach squared, yeah. right? Because Cash Younger, can play yeah. as yeah. well. So it's like, you know, uh, it's it's interesting. Lincoln Southeast probably has the the collective name star power. Lincoln East has the name star power. But Southeast may top to bottom be the most complete. Southwest, I mean. Southwest, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Did I say yeah. Southeast? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'm curious to see if if, if the Silverhawks can, can kind of meet the expectations. That's the thing about football. It's 11 on 11, which lowers the importance for any one individual yeah, except Sam maybe the Kappas, quarterback. Sam who's yeah. quietly one of the better athletes in the state. You don't see very many O-line, D-linemen that are – that are diving <laughs> at a state oh. at a state champion caliber level, just throwing around track just for the heck of it. Yeah. It's inside, yeah, uh, it's uh, you know, so so East is going to make that claim. Can he play? Can Sam play along with with some of those skill guys? But for for Southwest, is this the year? I mean, we oh, I, we've been playing these guys for a long time. When I was at Omaha North, Berkeley, Southwest has been on the schedule, and their guys always look the part. They gave North, they gave us fits. We played them twice in, in seven weeks and a run to a, a state bid when uh, they had a guy by the name of Josh Banderas who was pretty bad, fair, right? Yeah. They had a great defensive lineman with the last name La Couture, yeah. <laughs> who Nebraska once wanted, either. who ended up going to LSU. That Southwest team, they – I also had this, you know, they, they've had some fellas. Is is this the year that they kind of make that jump into kind of the who's who? Because they're in the shadow a little bit of a Lincoln Southeast and a Lincoln East who's got some name brand star power. And again, like the opportunities there. Um, again, the question's out there. Who is the best because of what those other teams lost? They, they've got still got some big names, but if they, I mean, they're, their freshman class last year was pretty good. Freshman, sophomore, yeah. they've got some athletes there. So are, are those guys ready to kind of fill the gaps on the team uh, to, to complement those upperclassmen that they've got that have been working for a few years? So, uh, if, we, so if we talk top seven, right, and we, we closed out with Millard South, who fills out, in your opinion, like eight, nine, ten? Is that where you get into the Lincoln schools? Are they better than that? Who? Who kind of fills out the back half of that top 10? Yeah, I think you, we'll have at least one of those Lincoln schools emerge, at least one of them um, to, to, to fill out that back 10. I, I I think beyond that, like that, that's kind of my question is like, who, what is that next tier? I think there are a lot of schools that we're still trying to figure out, all right, who's who, who's going to do what this year? There's a is lot there a of, team that's intriguing? For, like for me, uh, Miller North is intriguing. They have good young talent that's, with Vermont yeah. and, and Mooberry and some of those guys. Quaintance is back. Like, uh, I like Chavez. Like they have some, they have some good talent there. That 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 is a good one. And again, they they've been collecting some talent over the last few years yeah. that hasn't necessarily all come together. Now is the chance. Some of these before all these guys cycle through there, they kind of got to make that push now. And you mentioned some of those guys are still sophomores, um, but like with the upperclassmen meshing with those guys. They've got a little bit uh, of depth there to, to build around there if, the, if those guys are ready. So that, that's definitely a team that I'm going to be I, – I obviously, I know some some more North kids just from my background, and I know my guy Luke Davis is going to be playing football this year. So I'm, I'll be rooting for them. I, I hope they hey, do well. And quietly, it's open there. He's a good athlete. He yeah. has been for a long, long time. And you know what his best attribute is. He's competitive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, yeah, he, he will fight. He's, he's not he's, the biggest he's, dude. but He's fearless. I played against his dad. They called him Bird because he was little. <laughs> But, man, he was fearless. And Luke is kind of in that mold. Hey, before we get out of here and they cue the music to let us know we got to go, S tougher Super 6 than this year? Hey, let's sit on that next okay, week okay. and come back with the list. <laughs> okay. I think it, it's definitely going to be tough. Um, There's going to be some hurt feelings. Yeah. And we, we, we've we been basically all Class A in this one. I yeah. just want to shout out a few, uh, a few of the other top return. Abram Schulting at Pierce. Yeah. Can actually swing the ball. Cole McIntyre, Trey Trey Bird. Um, oh, at, they're gonna be so at good at Bennington. Yeah, that's they, they lose a Dylan Mostic, but you got Bird back. Um, you got Nick Culver back in the back. Colazzo at Aurora. That is, yeah, that was another one on the list. That's Sebastian Boyle, um, leading runner, um, in the state for for Scott's Bluff out there. Um, there's a lot of people that kind of quietly like them. I Rock, keep saying quietly. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they got. 
they got some good pieces coming back. Um, obviously, Brock Knudsen, big lineman you can build around. Um, Super six or eh? <laughs> again, we got 10, like nine, 10 power five type guys. So it's going to be all tough of a sudden 2023 got deep, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I mean, deep, deeper than I've ever seen in terms of ne- next level prospects, at least. Um, Brock Ro- Robley at North Platte, um, uh, huge part of that kind of three man back. And now with um, Genitone yeah. gone, they're going to rely on him. And Devin Jones at Papio South, um, who really had a really good, good year for them. Hey, they have a couple of sleepers. Is this the Titans year? They have good talent and sneaky good quarterback play too. One that has a chance to sneak up there. Yeah. And then you, you mentioned, or I mentioned Schulting. Obviously, uh, Ben Bramer out there, um, one of the best receiving threats going yeah. to Nebraska as well. Hey, here's so. a little secret and tip for next week. Ben Bramer. We'll talk about him again. We'll be in my super six. (laughs) He's the real deal. That's Jacob Padilla. I'm ODB. We'll be back next week where we get a little outside the Metro for Nebraska Preps postgame. Don't you dare miss it.